So in this video, we're going to be going deep into something crucial for understanding Star Wars. The Star Wars canon hierarchy. How does it work? Why does it matter? And what does it mean when we say something is G-canon, C-canon, T-canon or S-canon? So the canon hierarchy is a system put in place to govern the old timeline. So the old Lucasfilm licensing timeline from prior to 2014. And so it was created by Lucasfilm to organise the sprawling Star Wars universe with you know, so many authors, so many different mediums in it. And we're gonna go through it step by step using some direct quotes from Lucasfilm officials and creators to help explain how we know this system works and why it exists. First, let's talk about the tiers themselves. So the canon hierarchy is comprised of five primary tiers, G canon, T canon, C canon, S canon, and N canon. And picture them in like a pyramid. So G canon's at the top and N canon's at the bottom. Um, so let's break them down, starting from the top. So at the top of the canon hierarchy, we have G canon, and this stands for George Lucas canon and includes the six films that Lucas directly worked on, episodes one through six, and literally anything else you can think of that's from George Lucas. So his notes, early script drafts, um, anything like that, anything from Lucas. Even George Lucas's own thoughts are G canon. G canon is considered the truest form of Star Wars and the most authoritative source for understanding the galaxy. Everything in Star Wars starts here. If there's ever a contradiction between G canon and anything else in the franchise, G canon wins. It's the final word on what is officially real in the Star Wars universe. Other tiers are definitely canon, but they're not absolute canon. G canon is absolute canon. And every tier of canon below G canon is beholden to G canon. Leyland Shee tells us the LFL universe is definitely beholden to Lucas's vision, must follow certain tenets set by Lucas throughout the films and other guidelines that he provides. Even though Lucas wasn't writing the EU stories himself, the EU still had to align with his vision. If Lucas said something in the films or through official channels, the expanded universe had to follow those rules. So whilst other authors are free to exaggerate the mediums to whatever degree they want, they still have to follow those core tenets set by Lucas. They're still beholden to those core principles and concepts set up in the films and by George Lucas. And usually they get given directives by the continuity team and by Lucas directly sometimes to follow when making their books. I'm going to do another video entirely on Lucas's involvement with the EU because I could sit here and talk about that for about 20 minutes. So a great example of this is the contradiction surrounding Yoda's visit to Dagobah. It was said that Yoda fought a dark Jedi on Dagobah during the Clone Wars. However, in Revenge of the Sith, Yoda arrives on Dagobah and surveys it like it's an unfamiliar place. And Lucas had said that Yoda had never been to Dagobah before Revenge of the Sith. There was a comic made as well about that event um, where Yoda was called Minch. And that was originally meant to be Yoda's first name um, because that was Yoda's name actually in the early drafts of Empire Strikes Back. Um, but of course, so that got retconned and Minch became a separate character entirely. So that was one instance of the EU having to bend to fit George's vision. Out! Ted, I got your voucher. <laughs> Out! So the EU had to bend to George Lucas's canon in that instance. And that is how EU is beholden to George Lucas's vision. And that was Leyland Shee's job, to fit the EU into Lucas's vision, to make it all work as one continuity, as one timeline. And she tells us that, as always, a storyline directive from George Lucas trumps publishing continuity, so trumps continuity canon. This shows us that G-Canon is unmovable, and any contradictions with G-Canon result in lower tier canon being adjusted or reinterpreted to fit in with that higher level canon in G-Canon. And there's no such thing as Lucas written C-Canon. Anything that's written directly by Lucas or comes from Lucas is G-Canon. So, for example, the intro to the Shatterpoint novel, and the preface of the Shatterpoint novel was written by um, George Lucas, so that part of that book is G-Canon, despite the rest of the novel being C-Canon. Next is T-Canon, which stands for Television Canon, which is the Clone Wars, notably the Clone Wars 2008 TV show. It's T-Canon because of its heavy, heavy Lucas involvement. Of course, Lucas worked on the entire thing with Dave Filoni, and it's technically a Lucas product. 
but it's still not G canon because ultimately it's a cartoon. It's a different medium to G canon. It's not the truest version of Star Wars because whilst it's the same characters in the Clone Wars, they might act more childish or playful or jokey because of the different medium and the different target audience that the Clone Wars was developed towards. And I've talked about this in my last video about mediums in Star Wars. Every medium that is not the film medium, so everything that's not G-Canon, is seen through a foggy window. This is called medium distortion because the true medium, what really happens is G-Canon, but everything else might be exaggerated or a different medium, and that's just because of the foggy window. So it might be distorted through the medium we look at, but what really happens is how that event would play out in the film medium. And I've talked about this in my other video about mediums, go in depth on all of that. But that is why T-Canon is not G-Canon. Despite Lucas's heavy involvement, there's still those medium differences that makes it not the true depiction of those characters, which is how they're displayed in G-Canon. The further you get from the movies, the more medium distortion you get, and T-Canon, whilst closer and less distorted in comparison to the movies than C-Canon, is still distorted nonetheless. We mentioned the retcon before about Yoda going to Dagobah and how the EU had to bend to George Lucas's vision. Um, there are instances of T-Canon actually being able to contradict G-Canon in certain circumstances because of George Lucas's involvement with it and because of the recency of it. So George Lucas is building on G-Canon through T-Canon, but it still remains a lower tier of canon, obviously, because of that core medium difference. But of course, in that Dagobah instance, we have Yoda later going to Dagobah in Season 6 of Clone Wars, so that, again, retcons that. But that's one instance of... T canon being able to override G canon. And obviously, that only counts for stuff directly from George Lucas in T canon, which is technically G canon, functionally. Obviously, because it's from George Lucas. So, T canon is a close second to G canon. And before the release of the Clone Wars show, before T canon was a thing, the movie novelizations were said to be a close second to the movies. So, it's safe to assume that the movie novelizations can be viewed as functionally T-Canon. The tier of canon below this, we have C-Canon, which stands for Continuity Canon, and this includes everything from the expanded universe, the novels, the comics, the video games, and other stories that were created to expand on the Star Wars universe. While these stories are considered part of the official timeline, they're always subordinate to the films. Sue Rostoni tells us that canon refers to an authoritative list of books that Lucas licensing editors consider an authentic part of the Star Wars history. So this quote from Sue helps explain how sea canon fits into the bigger picture. It's considered part of the authentic Star Wars history, but as we'll see, it has to work within the framework set by the films. It's all beholden to G canon. So when people say, the EU's not canon, it was never canon, it was absolutely canon. C canon means continuity canon, but it just was lesser canon than G canon or T canon. C canon is said to be almost everything else you can think of outside of the Clone Wars show and the films. So, you know, anything from the Force Unleashed video game to the Unifying Force novel to the back, a quote on the back of a cereal box to the quote on the back of a toy action figure box. Um, it's all C canon. It's all part of continuity, continuity canon. Below C canon is S canon, which includes some older, more obscure materials, um, but mostly gameplay mechanics from video games, RPGs, and stats and stuff like that. So stuff that's not part of continuity, it's not part of C canon, but it's secondary canon. So S canon stands for secondary canon. S canon allows for a more loose interpretation of the Star Wars universe, especially in cases where it doesn't affect the larger narrative. But S canon is generally a lot more flexible. It includes material that's part of the universe, but it's considered secondary. It's not considered binding in the same way that G canon, T canon, or C canon is. S canon's important to filling out these little details, you know, like giving all the characters loads of different abilities in a video game or something, for example, they're S canon. And it's important for filling out the, those little details, but if a new story comes out and that contradicts something from S canon, future authors don't have to follow it, they're free to ignore or overwrite S canon whenever they want. Whereas they have to fit things into C canon, they have to fit things into G canon. 
So S canon doesn't have to follow the strict continuity of G or C canon. Future authors don't need to stick to anything established in S canon. And she directly tells us that S canon can be used or disregarded however future authors see fit. So S canon is distinct from the rest of the Star Wars hierarchy, unlike G canon or C canon, which must fit with the overall continuity. S canon is not bound by the same rules of continuity. It can be selectively used or ignored by creators, depending on needs of the story group. So S canon's not part of that continuous and unified history, and Sura Stoney says, our goal is to present a continuous and unified history of the Star Wars galaxy. So S canon's just secondary to all that. And finally, at the very bottom, is N canon, non canon. These stories are explicitly outside of the official continuity, like what if scenarios or parodies. Think of it like Lego Star Wars or Star Wars Infinity comics. The Star Wars Infinity's comics were just like kind of what ifs that were based in the Star Wars universe and they were never meant to be part of the official timeline. And so those events, all those events in end canon are outside of continuity completely, but in some instances can be seen as accurate alternate outcomes so it is what really would have happened if that did happen, but of course that didn't happen in the timeline. Examples of some end canon material are a lot of the Star Wars Tales issues, um, Star Wars, anything labelled Star Wars Infinities, um, stories like Old Wounds. So S and N canon are sort of similar, but S canon is secondary but still part of the Star Wars universe and can be selectively used or ignored in future storytelling. It's flexible and open to reinterpretation, but it holds a place in the larger canon structure. On the other hand, N canon is entirely outside of the official continuity and has no bearing on the main Star Wars timeline and it's reserved for content that contradicts established canon, or was never intended to be part of the official narrative in the first place. So these tiers of canon represent the different levels of importance and authority, ensuring that contradictions are managed, continuity is preserved, and the expanded universe remains understandable and coherent. Star Wars operates as one connected universe. The hierarchy ensures that everything from the films to the books and games ensures that it all fits together, and even if certain material is more authoritative than others, it prevents disjointed storytelling and chaotic world building by keeping everything interconnected. And they do a great job at this back in the day, handling retcons and going back and ex really explaining like things that didn't make sense and that fans called them out for um, on the forum boards or whatever. They'd, they'd answer that and they'd really connect with the community back in the day. And it's a shame that it's not so much like that anymore with the new Disney canon that um, they don't really seem to care about those continuity errors as much and they don't really go back on that and change that but back in the day everything was beholden to Lucas and that was a really strict rule so everything was really enforced um, obviously because Lucas owned the company back then. So the hierarchy ranks sources based on their importance to the overall narrative it gives more weight to the content directly influenced by George Lucas whilst allowing room for other stories in C canon and S canon to exist in the same universe. So the structure allows for creators and fans to understand which stories are core to the canon and which are more flexible and secondary. And of course, what things just aren't canon at all. So some things in Star Wars Tales, for example, alternate endings as well, and um, stuff like that. And not all Star Wars content needs to be equally binding. Like the hierarchy gives room for experimentation in certain mediums, especially in video games or comics, without disrupting the core narrative of the universe. For example, video games are often exaggerated um, with the force powers and the display of the force for gameplay purposes. The hierarchy ensures that these are understood as non-binding exaggerations rather than actual depictions of a character's true abilities. So all that is S-canon, or at least functionally S-canon when it comes to power commentary. But arguably the most important role of the hierarchy is to manage contradictions and given the vast amount of content in the Star Wars universe, contradictions, however big or small, are inevitable. And rather than using the headcanon to gauge what's important and gauge what's really true, we use the hierarchy. And when these contradictions arise, they're handled on a case-by-case -case basis. What this means is each contradiction is examined individually to determine which piece of content holds more weight. So for example, when they added inhibitor chips in the Clone Wars as a reason why the clones suddenly turned on the Jedi, 
that's contradictory, that conflicts with Republic Commando, for example, which talks about how the clones were just brainwashed and makes no mention of these inhibitor chips. But rather than Clone Wars just retconning Republic Commando outright, it's only that contradiction taken on its own which is retconned. So it's only that small conflict, that part where there's conflict, that small detail which gets retconned. It's not the entire story of Republic Commando and that's what taking it on a case by case means. So overall the purpose of the canon hierarchy is not only to organise the levels of canon, but also to give creators flexibility. The mediums can vary, they can take their characters to different extremes, while the films always hold the final say, the existence of tiers like S canon and C canon allows for creative freedom without compromising the core integrity of the Star Wars narrative and all those G canon concepts. The case by case approach to the contradictions assures that all stories, whether film, book or comic, can coexist in a single unified universe. So it kind of serves as a balancing act between maintaining a cohesive universe and allowing for creative freedom across various storytelling mediums. And by dividing material into different tiers, LFL, Lucasfilm, ensures that the films remain central to the Star Wars narrative, um, and all the books remain central to the Star Wars narrative, while still expanding the galaxy through the novels and comics and all that in all the different mediums. And the case by case preserves continuity by dealing with all these little contradictions and making it all work in the one universe. And yes, it is one universe, this question comes up a lot. This is a hierarchy of different levels of canonicity within one universe, it's not a hierarchy of different universes. If that were true, the purpose of the hierarchy, the purpose of having a hierarchical system, would be absolutely redundant. Because that would mean that each universe is independent of one another, a story one universe wouldn't need to adhere to the rules or events of another universe, so you wouldn't need to worry about conflicts between films and books because they wouldn't be expected to align in the first place. And why bother creating like G, T, C, S canon, all that? It wouldn't matter which is higher in authority because they wouldn't overlap. The entire point of a hierarchy is to determine which stories hold more weight in a shared continuity in one universe. And you need a hierarchy to prioritise which canon is most authoritative based on it's all on one interconnected timeline. So that's why you need the different authority, different levels of authority. Like the idea that it's not all interconnected and it's not all, it's not just one universe is one of the most common misconceptions and also one of the most ridiculous misconceptions as well. Because it just is not true. Like if you just look at any of the comments of any of the Lucasfilm officials about how continuity works, I think people just don't get enough context, don't see enough of those comments to really piece it together and see how it works, but that's what I've done here anyway, so hopefully this video can clear some stuff up. So what do people mean when they say canon? What does canon actually mean? And canon means the exact same thing as continuity. So anything that is official, anything that's officially licensed under Lucasfilm licensing and published is canon to the old timeline. Um, so all of that, like including video games, source books, um, it's all canon, it's all continuity canon. And then you've got G canon, of course, which is absolute canon. That's like word of God canon. And ironically, when people mistakenly say that the EU wasn't canon, was never canon. Um, of course, the C in C canon, which was the tier of canon designated for the expanded universe. The C stands for continuity, and continuity means canon. And so George Lucas is at the top, George Lucas is the governing body. So the closer to George Lucas that you get, the more canon you are. So typically sources are weighed in value and authority by the amount of Lucas involvement or by the amount of involvement with high-ranking LFL officials such as Howard Rothman or um, Leland Shee or someone like that. And George Lucas, unlike any other author in Star Wars, you know, it's not just like his word isn't just the same as like James Lacino's or, you know, Matthew Stover's. He's not just a high ranking authority figure. He's actually labeled as a tier of canon by Lucasfilm. So don't be mistaken in thinking that he's just 
an author and the oh, author quotes don't apply, George Lucas is directly labelled as a tier of canon and as the highest authority. He fits into that hierarchical system, the governing body of Star Wars. And the more lucas things get, the more involvement with Lucas, the higher canon it is. And the purpose of T-Canon and C-Canon is to fit around G-Canon and work into like one continuity and one universe. And it's to fill those holes left in G-Canon sort of thing. And those things from the expanded universe obviously are labelled C-Canon. And that's all C-Canon is, that's the expanded universe, it's obviously canon. Um, I don't know where this misconception comes from. Actually I do, it comes from George Lucas's and some of Dave Filoni's really kind of misleading comments. So the two universe myth, the myth that it's all multiple universes, um, it largely stems from Lucas saying comments like this, where he says that's my world which is the movies and there's this other world which has been created, which I say is the parallel universe. So quotes like this, out of context. They give rise to a lot of misconceptions because people don't know what we've just talked about largely in this video and they read comments like this and they think oh it's like a separate parallel universe but that overlooks a crucial nuance in how Star Wars canon is structured or was structured and maintained by LFL. Lucas doesn't care about dealing with continuity. That's why he hired Leyland Chi. He only cares about his vision of Star Wars and that's all he needs to care about because Leyland Chi does the rest by labelling him G-Canon by having this whole structure and obviously not just Leyland Chi but the whole continuity team and the story group and all them guys. Leyland Chi has stated that anything that is LFL copyright is official and part of the overall universe and slots into this hierarchy. The EU is beholden to George Lucas's vision and any contradictions are handled on a case by case basis. To what Leyland Chi said it's one universe, according to Leland Chi and the continuity team, and it's their job, obviously, to make this universe, to handle continuity and use this whole hierarchy system. And that's why, technically, the old timeline is called the Lucasfilm Licensing Timeline, um, and then we refer to the new one as the Disney Timeline, um, because the Lucasfilm Licensing Timeline was the timeline created by Lucasfilm Licensing, um, and that was the timeline that is inclusive of G canon, C canon, C canon, S canon, and all of that. And although Lucas didn't consider any of the stuff from the expanded universe as part of his timeline, he did recognize it as part of continuity. He still had to thumbs up concepts. He was still involved with the creation of all those stories. He still cared about the overall continuity to the point where he would actually help writers come up with ideas. He give certain guidelines out. Sometimes he's personally involved, sometimes it's through Sue or Howard Rothman or someone like that. So while he hired Chi to manage these contradictions and manage this continuity, he still cared about the continuity in so far as he cared about what was being put out there under the brand name Star Wars. You know, that's why he was involved with a lot of the EU and the creation of the stories there. That's why he gave a lot of notes to load the authors, you know, and that's why everything was beholden to Lucas. But everything is beholden to Lucas, and that's why it's one universe, because it wouldn't be beholden to Lucas if it wasn't one universe. They wouldn't have made these retcons, they wouldn't have tried to all fit it, fit it all in, into one cohesive universe, one cohesive timeline. Simply put, if it was multiple universes, there'd be completely no point in having a hierarchy system. And people might bring up, if it's one universe, then what about Lucas's comments about, you know, Mara Jade not ever existing, not being married to Luke? I am not the creator of Mara Jane, and I want you to get out of this office right now. Um, what about his sequel ideas and all that? Is that not technically just o does that not technically override all the other stuff from the lower tiers? But contrary to that, he has also at the same time approved certain stories for the licensing universe for the LFL universe. So it's instances where those conflict where. It's a confliction of what he's approved for the LFL universe and what he's just saying would be his idea for his vision of Star Wars. It's those instances where obviously we go to what is approved in licensing, what is officially published. And that is because George Lucas has also just given that the thumbs up. It's not like that is not a Lucas concept. Lucas might not have written the book, he might not have even been involved in the book, but ultimately he gave it the go ahead. 
ultimately it fit within the continuity and that is the version of the story that we go with. So with the NJO, for example, um, that's not contradicted by Lucas's sequel ideas. In terms of the Lucasfilm timeline and the licensing timeline and the whole old universe. And I'll clarify that none of this is used anymore. The canon hierarchy is something from before 2014 for the old timeline. It doesn't apply to the Disney timeline. Um, C canon, T canon, S canon, none of that exists anymore. And what they did was they turned C canon, S canon and N canon into legends and just merged those tiers of canon into one tier of canon called legends. And I've talked about the distinction between the old timeline and legends and I get technical on that because the old timeline had the canon hierarchy and legends technically is the same stories but without that structure, without that system. It's all just shoved now into one level of canon which is legends which is an alternate non-canon to the Disney timeline and that's how Disney views it. Under the Legends banner technically Infinity's end canon stories would be equally canon to sea canon stories like the Darth Plagueis novel, technically. But of course when we look at that timeline we look at it through the lens of the old system like how it was back in the day because that's how the timeline has been built, it's been structured around that system. Um, so the truth of the verse still lies in looking at it through the lens of the canon hierarchy. So when people like to say, oh, the EU was never canon, um, yes it was, it was C canon, it was official continuity canon. And that even goes to the extent of, like, you know, serial box quotes from marketing back in the day was all C canon. Um, so yes, the EU stories like Darth Plagueis, all of that was definitely canon back in the day. That is one of the most common misconceptions again and one of the most ridiculous misconceptions. And it all stems just from a misunderstanding of this canon hierarchy of the LFL policy and the structure surrounding the old timeline. And um, people think that it still exists for some reason in the Disney timeline, that's not true either. Um, I think a lot of the confusion comes from that as well. Um, but yeah, hopefully this video clears a lot of stuff up. And it's kind of a shame what they've done as well because they had this whole structure, this whole continuity structure and this whole universe. And what they've essentially done is they've taken N canon. They've shoved everything that was S canon and C canon into N canon. They've renamed N canon Legends. And then they've taken T canon and G canon. Merged the two of them. And then put their canon, their stories, sequels and all the comics and everything inside of that top level of canon. So there's only one level of canon in the Disney hierarchy now. There, well, there is no hierarchy. There's one level of canon, and then there's one level of not canon. So it's essentially G canon and N canon are the only two levels of canon within the Disney continuity. So under Disney, the films and the books, the Clone Wars, um, the novels, they'd all be technically the same level of canon. And whilst I think there is still probably a little bit of authority given to the films, um, there's technically no hierarchy there, there's no different levels of canon. It's all either canon or legends now. And personally, I much prefer the old hierarchy system, especially when the universe is that big. You know, the old timeline is a lot bigger than the Disney timeline, so it is necessary to have a more structured continuity. But I just think generally there was a lot more passion put into it back in the day, and um, just mainly probably because Lucas owned it and he cared more about how it worked and how the continuity was and all of that stuff um, but again this is all what I've talked about is all for the old timeline so this was all used prior to 2014 but as I say this is how this is the lens in which we should look at the old timeline through the lens of the canon hierarchy because ultimately it was the structure around which it was created you know it was made to fit into that structure and the truth of that timeline is revealed through looking at the timeline through this old structure. So that's the Lucasfilm canon hierarchy for the old LFL licensing universe. And that's kind of how it translates to Disney canon as well there, you know, how they've made the tears sort of thing and then rebranded it all, Legends, all of that stuff. Hope this video has cleared a lot of stuff up for people. Um, hopefully now we can start looking at that universe through a more accurate lens and getting a more accurate depiction of how to scale how to weigh sources and ultimately how to look at the universe as a whole through a more accurate lens. 
and really get down into discovering the truth of the universe and everything that's really going on there. Um, so if you liked the video, if you enjoyed, subscribe, um, and I'll see you in the next one.